David Smith here with another Flip Classroom Math video. A few tips before we start. Remember that you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you follow along. You can also pause the video at any point to catch up with your notes or to try the problems before I explain them. Finally, you can turn on the captions and read my words below on the bottom of your screen. Today's topic, more work with difference of squares. You remember our last lesson we introduced this pattern, we're going to dig in and spend some more time, add a few more complexities to flesh out your knowledge and your understanding. So let's do that. Um, four problems here that aren't going to look similar to the last ones, because they aren't. So check this out. x squared minus 11. 11 is not a perfect square. I can't factor out any GCFs. How might I do that? Well, the answer lies in expressing 11 as a square. So check this step out. x squared minus root 11 squared. Okay, now that looks weird, but as you know, root 11 squared is just 11. Remember, squaring and square rooting are inverse operations. One undoes the other. So if I take the square root of 11 and then square the result, I'm back here to 11. So now this looks like a difference of squares. I have one thing squared minus another thing squared. So this is going to give me x plus root 11 times x minus root 11. Pretty cool. Okay, so you now have enough to do this one. Pause the video and see what you get. Okay, let's take a look at that. Our next step here is bring my x squared over, because that's a square, minus root 20 squared. Okay, so root 20 squared is the same as 20. Now let's finish this up. I get x minus root 20. Oh, let's do the plus first, and then x minus root 20, like that. Now, are we finished? If you said no, you're correct. Root 20 can be simplified. Remember, that's 4 times 5 under the root. The 4 is a perfect square, comes out as a 2. So this becomes x plus root 2 root 5 times x minus 2 root 5. So this goes back to our radicals chapter. This is not in simplest radical form because it has perfect square factors. So we did that and we got down to 2 root 5 for our root 20. If you're rough on that, you probably want to go back and watch that video and make sure that you understand how to do that. Moving forward in our class, you are on the hook for turning your radicals into simplest radical form. Okay, let's move on. Here's another one. A little bit more complicated because instead of just having an x squared, I have this x plus 3 squared. So it adds a wrinkle. If you're feeling up to a challenge, pause the video now, see what you get. Okay, let's do this one. This can be written as x plus 3 squared, there's my first square, minus square root 5 squared, like that. So now I have a difference of squares. So now it's the first thing, x plus 3 plus root 5 times x plus 3 minus root 5. Okay. Now, that's starting to get into what I call ugly answer territory. This is, this is factored. If you did all these multiplications, you'd wind up back here. But this is not what I would call a super satisfying answer. However, I want to make one point. Resist the temptation to pull out your calculator and figure out the decimal approximation of root 5 and combine it with the 3. If you check the answers in the back of our textbook, you'll see that they list the answers like that. Okay. Now, if you feel ready, give this one a try. Very similar to that one. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. But before we do it, I want to ask you, do you see something here that doesn't quite fit the pattern where we've been working? Okay, if you noticed that this is a plus 2 instead of a minus 2, and all the other ones, we've always had minuses because this is the difference, which is subtraction, of squares. So, here's a typo. I just wrote the wrong thing. So that's the problem. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get that. Okay, let's see how you did. This would be x minus 4 squared minus the square root of 2 squared. 
So then we get x minus 4 plus root 2 times x minus 4 minus root 2. Just like that. All right, a couple more problems. Now, buckle your seatbelt. These are going to get a little bit more complicated, and it becomes more important that you keep track of your algebra. Keep your signs right. Combine your like terms. So let's take a look. 3x plus 2 squared. Here's a square. 9 is 3 squared. So we can rewrite this. 3x plus 2 squared minus 3 squared. Now, the next step is going to be this thing plus this times this thing minus this. So let's do that. So this is going to be 3x plus 2 plus 3 times 3x plus 2 minus 3. Okay? So just first things, first thing plus the other, first thing minus the other. Now I can combine some stuff because I have a 2 and a 3. So this is 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 1. Okay? Now if you feel ready, try it on that one, okay? Let's see how you did. Okay, so this is going to be 4x plus 3 squared minus 5 squared, right? 25 is 5 squared. Now we do it. The first one is going to be 4x plus 3 plus 5 times 4x plus 3 minus 5. Last step, I'm going to combine my numbers. 4x plus 8 times 4x minus 2. Okay? So, not too bad, but definitely more steps, more record keeping. Okay, so let's do a couple more complicated problems. This is about as complicated as you're going to see with our difference of squares pattern. So, these two problems, take a peek. One thing squared minus another thing squared. The things are more complicated, but the pattern is the same. So the key to solving these ones is going to involve correct use of brackets. So I'm going to start with an outside bracket and then put in my first thing plus my second thing, like that. So this is that first term. Now my second term is going to be first thing minus my second thing, bracket. So first thing plus second thing times first thing minus second thing. That's our pattern. Now it just looks super complicated. And this will just test your algebra skills, record keeping, keeping track of signs, things like that. Let's keep going. These are all pluses and minuses. So there's no multiplication going on in here. So I can just start combining. Here's two x's. I'm going to get two x. And I have a plus 2, but a minus 1, so it's 2x minus 1. And I don't need my square brackets anymore. I'm good there. Now this one gets a little bit more tricky. This is x plus 2 minus x minus 1. This negative, it's like a negative 1 sitting out there. It's multiplying by both of these. So this is going to be negative x and negative 1 times negative 1. This is going to become positive 1. So I can combine, but I just have to track my signs. So this is going to be, I have x and I have negative x, because negative 1 times x. So these x's are going to cancel out. And then I have 2 plus minus times minus 1, so that's 2 plus 1. So this is 3. So I can write this a little bit better. This is going to be 3 times 2x minus 1. Now, that's pretty cool. This was really complicated. It got even more complicated here. But guess what? We worked it down, and we got a relatively simple answer. Okay. Pause the video and see if you can use these steps to complete that problem. It's a toughie. Okay, let's try this one. Keeping track of our brackets. First thing, x minus 3 plus second thing, x plus 2, bracket, new bracket, First thing, x minus 3 minus x plus 2, bracket. Okay, now as long as I did that step right, we'll get to the right result. I think in some ways this is the more complicated step. Okay, so now I have, because there's a plus there and there's no multiplication, I can just combine all the like terms. So I'm going to get, there's two x's there, 2x. I have a minus 3 and a plus 2, that's minus 1. Now let's do this next one. 
Now the negative is going to change the sign of both of those. So this one is kind of like minus x and this is minus 2, just to keep track. So I have an x and a negative x, goes away, and I have a minus 3, minus 2 more, that's minus 5. So this becomes minus 5 times 2x minus 1. Bingo. Now that you've finished, take a moment to write down any questions so you can bring them to our next class and get some help. You can also watch the video again to improve your understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below. And if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.